Music and the Radio 4.2. Talk about the history and impact of music and the radio. Essential bits of information. Music can affect our emotions more than any other medium. It can cheer us up. It can make us think of things in the past. It can bring up all sorts of emotions. It can be a de-stressor. Music uh, really does affect us in many different ways. And music distribution is basically controlled by Apple and Apple Music. And only three companies own most of the major record labels. Like six companies own all the other media, like television media. Well, three companies own all the music. And radio is usually a secondary activity. It's something that we do uh, while we're doing other things, multitasking. And news and talk radio are the highest rated formats of radio, like Rush Limbaugh, NPR. And Americans, on an average, listen to four hours of music a day. Are you above average or below average there? I'm probably above average for the most part there. And what is your favorite song, genre, and why? Post it down in the comments below. All right, brief history of recorded sound. Right, History of music, great song by Pentatonix here. It goes around through all history of different songs. Check that out in the, uh, in the description. In 1877, Thomas Edison kind of started it all here. Okay, he invented the phonograph. Okay, this was the recording device that played back voices. He also invented like these creepy dolls that played back voices as well. But all kinds of recording devices he would uh, he invented. Uh, in 1877, Emil Berliner invented the gramophone. When you think of gramophone today, you think of the Grammy, the award that is given to the top musicians and music and artists uh, of the year, and is designed after the gramophone. Okay, the Grammy Awards, named after and designed after that, created with record sounds on your flat metal discs. That's 1887, 1948. Vinyl records were introduced, and then they went away, and then now they're making a comeback. You see them uh, more and more. Uh, record players and vinyl. People really love the sound of vinyl records. Very old school sound because it was invented in 1948. Uh, and so vinyl records have made a comeback, uh, but they are one of the earliest mediums of music. And 1965, Ford's like, hey, we want to uh, play music in the car. And so, but uh, records would skip too much. So let's come up with a cassette. And it came up with an eight track. This thing holds eight different songs. Stick it in your car, and you can play this music you want to listen to, and without it skipping around. An evolution of dance. Great video. Again, the guy just go through all the different dances uh, throughout history. Uh, if you have not seen it, check that out in the description below. Uh, 1977, Sony introduced the Walkman, creating personal audio movement. Get a pair of headphones, and you can stick a cassette in the Walkman and walk around, and you know you get your own personal music. Speaking of cassettes, 1980s cassettes were all the rage. They were the most popular music format. That's the music format that I began with was the cassette player. Even though my mom has some LPs and my dad has some 8-tracks, one that I really began in, uh, growing up in the 80s was the cassette. And so mixtapes were all the rage. You know, create, you record songs off the radio and create tape, and you have you can listen to your favorite songs. and Or go to, you know, cassette world and go buy a, a buy a tape 82 the cds were introduced okay he came, came to industry standard in the mid 1990s everyone cds walmart had aisles of cds of course nowadays everything's changed because it has become digital thanks to 1995 motion picture exports group mpeg introduced the mp3 in 1995 and that became the industry standard today digital music streaming music downloading music is the way to go so in 2001 peer to peer sharing sites this is napster changed the music industry okay and these sites you'd go online and you would uh go with these Napster or LimeWire or whatnot and download songs. And you'd hope their songs are not viruses on your computer. Uh, so you can listen to them and have them and own them. And Napster got sued uh, by Metallica. Uh, so they weren't making any money. They were stealing music. So Napster had to get shut down. Then it came back, changed differently. The peer-to-peer uh, was the way to go for pirating music back in 2001. Uh, and I still I still credit that today for shutting down my hard drive on on one of my first computers I owned. Uh, was because of a bad uh, virus from a song from peer to peer. 
Thanks, LimeWire. And uh, 2001, Apple introduced the iPod. And with the iPod, you can now take these tunes off your computer and portable, like the Walkman. And Apple's going to launch iTunes, where you can download and buy songs. Instead of just getting them illegally, you can see buy them and don't worry about getting viruses. And uh, you can play them in your iPod. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, Microsoft tried to get the Zune, the computer iTunes, and yeah, that didn't work out very well at all. In 2005, Pandora launches. Begin the streaming music movement. That's where we're at today. Streaming music is all the rage. Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music. People stream music more than any other type of listening music. They stream it, whereas from YouTube. Uh, and so in 2019, Apple's actually closing iTunes and they're transitioning to separate apps, such as Apple Music, where you can fit all your music, download and stream music from Apple. It's kind of the king of online music. History of the Radio. 1920 KDKA in Pittsburgh broadcast election results. 1920, 30, 60% of Americans owned a radios. And these radios were big and bulky, and they were like had one in a family room, kind of like a TV today, where the whole family would sit around the radio and listen to shows, listen to the news, listen to the president, listen to sports scores, election results, or whatnot. And so it was big time for radio. And the Golden Age Radio, 1920s, 1950s. And full service stations, these are uh, stations that report everything, kind of like your TV stations, so like ABC, NBC. They do sports scores, voting results, soap operas, lectures, weather reports, comedians, political commentary, stories. They're all popular. They go in the studio and do a little sitcom or you know, Little Orphan Annie or The Lone Ranger. Uh, they all started on uh, the radio. And that's 22. Radio wants a way to make money. Well, guess what? They're going to have advertisements. And the first advertisement was uh, AT&T. So in 1947, transistor radio began. And so people can now carry the radio with them. They don't have to gather around the family home. They can carry it around with you. Similar to like your cell phone today, you don't have to gather around a television. You can just watch TV right on your phone and palm of your hands. It's kind of the same thing that transistor radio uh, did for radio back in 1940s and 50s. Right, early 50s, top 40 radio begins uh, to go with full service stations because television was coming in. Uh, people go going to watch TV to get their news and shows and everything. So radio had a transition to something else. So they changed the top 40 music. Plus, teenagers were really starting to come into their own at this time. And it became a, you know, they had their own culture, teenage culture for the first time in the 50s. And so they gravitated towards this top 40 radio, these rock stars. Right, today, listening to radio or to music is, in general, is considered a secondary media activity. Something we typically do while studying, working, driving, working out. You know, we don't listen to radio and just listen to radio. We're either, you know, on our phone or working on homework or watching TV. Even sometimes, uh, but we're doing other things: reading a book, driving, uh, doing other things other than just uh, your typical listening to music. And that's all we're doing. So most people stream music today through app Pandora, Spotify. Are and Apple Music are the ones that are used the most. Uh, and that's how and YouTube uh, is what people use to stream most of their music. So one of the interesting uh, things about radio, early radio, the War of the Worlds. Yes, you probably know about it from the Tom Cruise movie, but this is long before the Tom Cruise movie. This is an uh, H.G. Wells classic H.G. Wells story. Now Orson Welles, he decided, you know what, I'm going to broadcast this over the radio. And I want to uh, uh, do it without, you know, I want to make do it like it's actually happening, like it's sounding real. So Orson Welles, at the beginning of the broadcast, puts in people, now this is a joy my genre meditation, it's not real, aliens are invading, invading. Okay, he said that, you know, several times throughout. But if you just turn it on and listen to this, and you'd be freaked out because you think aliens have landed and are here to kill us all. And War of the Worlds was the first time the radio duped. People, mass media duped the people. We thought it was real. Okay, the Earth was being invaded by Martians. Panic shot across the country. Well, kind of in a way, because this is the first time the public has been, like I said, duped by electronic like media. Did panic spread across the country? Well, the New York Times kind of helped that out because they kind of wanted to sell more papes, and so they were like, "Hey, uh, let's put this main headline that radio listeners in panic." Uh, taking more drama as fact. That did happen, but panic probably didn't across the entire country because of this, but people were duped. Uh, New York Times spread this 
out everywhere. Story made front page of New York Times. What worlds is an example of a simpler time. Media's power to influence public perception and behavior. Okay, fake news. Okay, can we still be duped by something like this today? Yeah, we are all the time. Fake news online. Okay, we we retweet, share, like posts that are completely false and fabricated. And so we are duped all the time by media still. This is like one of the earliest fake news. I right, to music industry. All right, the music industry is controlled by three corporations, like I mentioned earlier. You have Universal Music Group, controls 40% of the world's commercial music library. Warner and Sony control nearly the rest of the worldwide uh, music market. And companies are more likely to sign artists that sound similar to what they've already proven commercially successful. So you hear something on radio, you hear similar songs to that on radio for like six months. It's all the same kind of songs because that's what, hey, people like this. I want to you know, find their artists who sound similar and put them on radio. And so these companies are constantly doing that. So it sounds familiar and when it works, they just keep doing it. Right? These companies are not entertainment business. They are in it to make money. It's all about making money. Not about entertaining you, not about breaking out new artists, but it's about making money. So Apple now controls worldwide distribution through its music library and Apple Music. In 2018, last year, Apple generated $10 billion from Apple Music, iTunes, and Apple Pay. So a large chunk of their profit comes from music. Apple kind of owns the music industry. Apple Music has taken over. Radio stations earn money the same way that television stations do by selling ad time. And the morning and afternoon drives are the most costly to advertisers because that's where the ratings are at because that's when people are listening to their radio more. When they're driving to or from work and school, uh, they're listening to the radio in the cars. And so advertisement prime time. So similar to prime television, advertisement prime time is the morning and afternoon drives. Right, today, programming directors work in large corporations, own stations, select music in advance, so DJs really don't have much to do. They make a playlist, and they play, and then they talk in between and play advertisements. Okay, Very few request hours. DJ uh, control is very limited nowadays. And radio is no longer an engine that fuels the music industry. We now listen to more of our music through online streaming and purchasing. Right, television and music. MTV changed the industry with music video. You know, video killed the radio star. You know, it was the first video shown on MTV, The Buggles. And it changed, transitioned, transformed the music industry. Right? Physical attractiveness and the musical artists affected their success. What they looked like was just important, but how they sounded like. And it's still kind of like that today. Musicians are perfectly packaged for presentation on TV and YouTube. Video killed the radio star, internet killed the video star. Very true quote. Not sure who said it, uh, but it is very true. Lyrics to the songs. How often do you actually listen to the lyrics? Well, if you actually did, you'd probably be like, whoa, what am I listening to? You know, at least two, because, oh, yeah, it has a good beat to it, you know? You know, if, if the radio has to edit out 90% of the song, yeah, but probably not a very good song. Uh, so many people do not listen to the lyrics. Music, they, they might be appalled by what they actually hear. So pop music has many objectionable lyrics. But that's okay because people have different opinions of objectionable. So the First Amendment allows one to oppose objectionable lyrics. They can't outlaw them. Okay. Of course, FCC regulates it. That's why you hear all the you know radio editing clean versions of songs on the radio because they can't just flat out cuss words on the air airwaves for children and their families to hear. The mention of specific alcohol brands in the songs increased over the years, 21% in the last decade. If a person listens to three hours of daily music, they hear 3,000 references to alcohol. That's a lot. And a lot of it comes from like your country music songs all right, or rap songs. All right? it, is, it is illegal to advertise to minors, but they may put in a song. It's not advertising. You can get away with it. So you can just, you know, talk about all you want. And so many songs mention these projects specifically by name. Your pickup truck, your alcohol. And this product placement is not advertising. Do you agree or disagree? Should it be considered advertising and taken out of songs? Or is it freedom of expression? You know, in the comments below. And song lyrics can also raise society's consciousness of an issue better than any TV news interview could ever do. Such as, we are the world. 1985, everybody got together, all these famous artists, and we, we are the world. 
Uh, and then you have stuff like, uh, you know, Kiss, not Kiss, uh, <laughs> Queen's Live Aid performance. Uh, you know, raising money and raising, raising awareness. You know, another good one that comes to mind is Alan Jackson's Where Were You World When the World Stopped Turning after 9 11 hit. Very popular song, brings up emotions. Portray of women in the music industry. Well, the way music industry portrays women has the potential to affect the culture's view of women. Right? In a rap music videos, for example, women are scantily dressed, act merely as props for the male vocalists. They shove their money or throw their money around and and have a good time, and women are merely just objects. Right? So Megan Trainor got a uh, heat for her song, Dear Future Husbands, and it sent a wrong message. And so then she's like, okay, I'm going to release a song called No uh, to counteract that to negative press and the mass media industry is very superficial it's music and of the internet today's streaming music online has become the most popular way to listen to music whether it's in youtube pandora apple music or spotify the internet is taking over the music industry much to the chagrin of people like taylor swift who actually uh took her stuff off spotify for a while because these artists get pennies per stream they don't get make much money at all, so they're like, "Hey, we need more money for streaming rights," and so that's a big deal today. Artists are cramming for more money for streaming rights. Uh, the current debate in the music industry is: is stream music versus purchase music? Do you, do you purchase the music or do you stream it? And is music a product or a service? Is it something that you buy or is it something that you have, like water? And so, the discussion questions. How do songs particular time periods differ? In what ways are culture change represented in music? How are song lyrics poetry? Which lyrics promote social change? And can music have psychological effect on us? So until next time, see ya.